Assalamu alaikum and welcome to The Disturbing Truth. I'm Alexandra al and I'm joined with Sarah al Mahdi. Assalamu alaikum. So yesterday we discussed, um, you know, what is this religion? What is the Ahmadi religion yeah. of peace and light? And we discussed basically, you know, this is not a new religion. This is a continuation of the oldest religion. Um, and this is the only true religion on earth. This is the only, um, you know, original mm. version. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we have with us basically the most important belief, which is that God appoints the vicegerent on earth, like in the Quran, when it states um, when God appoints Adam, um, verily, I'm appointing a caliph on the earth. And, you know, he blows his Holy Spirit into Adam and he commands the angels to prostrate to Adam. You know, this essence of religion, this core of religion has always been to find the man with the Holy Spirit, which has passed from person to person since the time of Adam until now. And so we believe basically to be on the truth, we have to be with this man that God has appointed. Um, and we also discussed Ahmad al-Hassan, who is the Yamani um, from him is peace. Um, and the first Mahdi who was appointed in the will of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. Mm -hmm. So we discussed how he met Imam Mahdi. Um, you know, he found out basically through Imam Mahdi who he was. Um, and, you know, he was instructed by Imam Mahdi to call the people um, mm -hmm. towards him and call the people to the true message of God, which has always been the supremacy of God, um, to allow God's rule on earth through the man that he appointed. Um, so, yeah, this dawa, it also marks the fulfillment of three major prophecies, right? Yeah, and that's what the most, the biggest miracle of this dawa actually is mm. that uh, there, like, people always are waiting for the narrations to come to life, you know? Yeah. Like the end time signs to come to life. Exactly, yeah. Like, people are like, okay, then when it comes to pass, that's when we believe that the Mahdi, you know, he's real, he's here, and he exists. Yeah. And you see, there's this major prophecy this major tradition that the Shias, well, they really know this one. Mm. And many scholars have spoken about it. Uh, and that is that where one of the end time signs about a Hijaz. Hijaz is the uh, ancient like um, word for Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. what today is Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And in that narration, it's a narration of a from Prophet Muhammad. And I'm going to read that narration out. And in it, it says that there shall rule Hijaz a man whose name is the name of an animal. And I want people to really like hear this, uh, this narration because it's very, it's very important and it's the key of knowing, it's one of the key uh, signs for the appearance of the imam. Mm. So it says, Hijaz will be ruled by a man whose name is the name of an animal. If you look at him, mm -hmm. so if you look at him from afar, you will think that he is cross-eyed. But if you come close to him, his eyes seem normal. He will be succeeded by a brother named Abdullah. Woe to a Shia from him. And he repeated this thrice, mm. you know, three times. And that's because of the oppression that he'll put upon them. Mm. So the prophet says, Give me glad tidings of his death and I shall give you glad tidings of the appearance of the Hujja. Yeah. So it it's means very literal. It yeah, doesn't no, leave much room for interpretation. And, uh, that's the f fascinating part is that it, mm. uh, uh, like we've, we've, it's all of our... Um, website and you can actually check it out but if you look at this hadith and then you find that the king uh it was the king of hijaz uh before mm. before his death and that was king abdullah and he had a he had a brother called fahad mm. fahad and the hadith what does it say his name is the name of an animal and fahad means leopard yeah mm. it's 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 insane how like detailed the hadith is and how like it matches to the point yeah. Definitely. So even if people have this issue of that, like uh, this, oh, this hadith is weak. Oh, it's a Shia hadith. It doesn't matter because yeah. the hadith came true. It's exact. Yeah. 100%. So, what is it? So Ahmad Hassan, the Yemani, what happens uh, when Abdullah King Abdullah dies, mm -hmm. and the the glad tidings is given to uh, Imam Mahdi of his death, and what happens? Of course, who comes out in twenty fifteen, twenty third, twenty third. Of January 2015, the one who rises, who raises the black banner on that day is the Qaim. The mm. Hujja is the Qaim. Because mm -hmm. many narrations state that uh, uh, the Hujja that this hadith is referring to is the riser, the yeah. Qaim of yeah. the family of Muhammad. So then what is this banner, right? And uh, in Bihar al Noir, which is a Shia narration, it says here that there is no banner which is more guided than the banner of the Yamani. It is a banner of guidance because he calls towards your companion. 
If the Yemeni emerges, then selling weapons becomes impermissible upon the people and every Muslim. And if the Yemeni emerges, then rise and go to him. For verily his banner is a banner of guidance, and it is not permissible for any Muslim to go against him. Mm. Whoever, whoever does so is from the people of hellfire, because he calls to the truth and to the straight path. Yeah, so this banner that was, um, you know, the banner of the Yemeni who is Ahmed al-Hassan, basically, mm -hmm. this is something, you know, you know, he came with this before um, the time of Abba al Sadiq, before the Qaim um, raised the black banners. And, um, you know, the reason that whoever goes against it is from the people of Hellfire was because it's the banner of supremacy of God, exactly. basically. Um, so it's this message that God is the one who appoints the leader and we only follow the one appointed by God. And, you know, as we discussed yesterday, this was a really neglected message mm -hmm. that Ahmed al Hassan, when he came forward mm -hmm. um, as instructed to by Imam Mehdi, you know, he really like revived this. It was completely forgotten. Yeah, All of for the sure. scholars of the time, they were just calling towards the supremacy of the people, mm -hmm. calling towards the tyrants. Um, and we know that, you know, this was the message of all the prophets and messengers. Mm. Um, but the first person to say it in a long time, really publicly, was Ahmed al Hassan. Exactly. In this piece. And uh, as I mentioned in uh, yesterday, is that Ahmed Hassan, he's, he was in this situation where even though it was very heavy for him to accept mm. that he is the companion of the will and he is mentioned in the will and, it, and that Ima, he is Imam Mahdi's successor, mm. this also happened with Abu Sadiq. Yeah. Yeah, Abdullah Hashim. Mm. So when he, he raised the banner, it also did not cross his mind that he would be appointed by Ahmed Hassan. Mm -hmm. Just the same. Because exactly. you know the the supremacy of God. That's why it's a uh, that's why it's key, because we don't know these leaders. So when we elect a leader, you don't know the hearts. God does, and uh, a true leader is someone who doesn't really seek the power. Exactly, and this was another like major prophecy that was fulfilled. That when the Qaim rises, he raises a black banner with allegiances to God on the banner. Um, and this was fulfilled by Abba al Sadiq from him, his peace. So, when the death mm. of uh, uh, King Abdullah happened, of Hijaz, it was obviously the glad tiding was that he had to, he 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 gave the appearance of the Qaim, how he went and told Abu Sadiq, Abdullah mm. Hashim, that you are the Qaim and you're the one who is mentioned in the will. So, he mm. had to claim the will. Exactly. So, yeah, as you said, you know, Abba al Sadiq from him, his peace, he was in the same position that Ahmad al Hassan from him, his peace had been when he saw exactly, Imam Mehdi. Exactly. Um, because he hadn't known, like, it hadn't even occurred to him, basically, that he could be a Mehdi. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, you know, he was told, basically, by Ahmad al Hassan that his matter was the same um, as his. Um, and that Ahmad al Hassan, you know, he had to go forward and call the, the Arabic people towards the truth. And it was Abba al Sadiq um, from him, his peace, to call the rest of the world, basically, in, in English and um you know to all the other nations basically who do not speak arabic exactly and um what is it then that um the the fascinating thing is that it, this prophecy it came to to it, it came to life in full detail mm. fahad right the man with the animal he has a brother abdullah abdullah dies and the riser that we give get, we're getting glad tidings of the riser how he actually comes to the scene publicly mm. of a Sadiq, he raises the black banner in 2015 and he starts calling people towards the supremacy of God. People start going out to go meet him, you know, and uh, he, he people hear of the dawah, mm. of the black banner dawah. And yeah. it, was, it becomes so popular in 2015. People people in, in the Middle East know about it up until now. Mm. Yeah. So it's, what else can it be except the truth? It's insane for you to think otherwise. Exactly, yeah, you know, and it's spread really throughout the whole world. Exactly. Like exactly as he was, you know, um, informed um, so, you know, when he found out, obviously he was shocked and he, he said when, in this episode where he's discussing this topic, you know, he said that he had a choice, basically, you know, either he disbelieves in the will of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family, disbelieves in Ahmed al-Hassan and, you know, the whole religion, basically, mm -hmm. disbelieves in the supremacy of God, or he accepts this idea because it was something that he never expected and he said, you know, it was probably the most, like, shocking um, thing for him to have to accept, but, um, you know, he... He believed in the supremacy of God. He believed in the will of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family. And he believed in Ahmed al-Hassan. Um, so, yeah, he accepted, basically, um, this appointment from Ahmed al-Hassan. Um, and, yeah, he is the only one now who is authorised to speak on behalf of Imam al-Mahdi. He is the only one who is calling towards the supremacy of God on earth. Um, yeah, and, yeah, exactly. he is the only one who has the authority to carry out God's will on earth right now. Um, so exactly. So then that's mm. exactly what we're, why we're here right mm. now and this is why people are watching this channel because we are calling you towards the supremacy of god that god has elected a ruler mm -hmm. he has elected a caliph 
of the time, the Mahdi that uh, everyone has been waiting for has appeared. The mm. crime that everyone is waiting for is here. And w- that's that's our job right now is just to spread his message. He mm. is making so many videos. Yeah. Like he has publicly got out there. Yeah. You can actually check out his YouTube channel, The Mahdi Has Appeared TV. Mm. And in it, he is showing nothing except what every prophet messenger came with. As we mentioned, the banner, mm. the will, the divine knowledge. He knows things about the Torah, Bible, and Quran. The way he puts them together is as if he he's the author of them. It's 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 so fascinating and it's so deep. His immense knowledge. Mm. Like, how can anyone accept someone who has a divine force behind them? Yeah, know it, this stuff exactly. It's like before, um, you know, we heard the knowledge from Abba Asad from him's piece. It's like we all had like separate pieces of a puzzle. But he's the only person who's able to put to link everything together so it's a complete picture and to like decode all of the um kind of symbolic and allegorical um mm-hmm. meanings that were in the scriptures um that humanity has never really understood before. Um and you know, the knowledge that he has actually provided in this time is more than any prophet or messenger who came before him. Um exactly. and it's the only That's time the in history that this has been available to the whole world. So yeah. it's really like very exciting this channel. Yeah. Um so yeah, if you go to this channel, the Mehdi has appeared, you can see all of these videos made by Abba Al Sadiq from him as peace, and it's just really mind blowing. Like there are so many people um throughout the world and that number is increasing every day who have come across this channel and they've just their mind has been blown and their lives have been changed and they have immediately known that this man is from God because this knowledge can only be from God. It's not the kind of thing that anyone could learn or make up for themselves. Yeah. Mm. And if we look at the state of the world right now, mm. like we, in many of our episodes and on this channel and Abu Salik's episodes, he's always like bringing, he's always like making us focus on the state of the world. Yeah. Definitely. And the state of the world is, it's horrible Mm. like i don't know it's like it's terrifying how bad it's become and like it truly is a very very dark time Mm. like we live in a time where like as the prophecies have mentioned that there is no true religion like islam is just this name Mm -hmm. the mosques and the churches they're empty of guidance definitely nobody knows who to turn to Exactly. Like, yeah. except that, like, mm. people are like have to steal for food. Like, people are doing uh, are breaking every law in the Torah. People mm. are breaking every law in the Gospels. Every law that the Quran has brought forth, because mm. they don't know who to turn to. Yeah, and also, you know, the fact that these narrations say that nothing will remain of Islam except its name, and you know, the the same is true for all of these mainstream religions. It's like the religions are so empty; they just have a name. So it's like people are just in this state where they don't even understand the point of following them anymore. They don't even get this connection with God. Um, They don't have this certainty that they're on the right path. They're all like misguided and, you know, the people they're following are really evil. um, Yeah, no, for sure. And then we mentioned, right, that uh, this has happened because people are like, they self-appoint people. It's like Mm. this concept that we we and we want to make sure people like we emphasize this and it's that this makes god angry yeah like this truly makes god angry mm. it's mentioned on in the scriptures when samuel went back to god and said that the people want their king basically they want they want um god to choose another king for them mm-hmm. other than samuel mm. and this really angered god and the whole world is doing that right now and a christian Christ, christian people who i mean nations who claim that they're um, christian mm. are doing the opposite of what the gospels teach exactly and you know we talk about this a lot but it really is like the most important subject that you can possibly think I don't about think you right can talk now. about it enough to be honest yeah. because I, I feel like it goes over people's minds yeah it does you know this fact that the supremacy of god is what all of the prophets and messengers came with that god is the one who's supposed to appoint the ruler and that we're not you know every time we follow someone who's not appointed by god we are following an appointment of Satan, basically. We are going against what God wants us to do. Um, and for sure, you know, that's made him angry. Yeah, no, you know, and you know what's what's sad? Mm. It's, we live in a world that people are not sure if God exists. Yeah. People don't know if God is a real thing or mm. it's just a legend or it's just a story. Or yeah, because we're so up. far away from God by this point because we've That's followed all of these people who are not appointed by God so and we've just travelled so far in the wrong direction that we can't even don't. feel the presence of God anymore. We don't know it's insane. It's who like God it's is. We don't know anything don't know about anything. him. Yeah. yeah, Like we don't have that relationship that Adam had in the Garden of Eden, you know, that exactly. very close, cl- that, cl- that, with, that he could walk with God. Like mm. He was walking with God like Enoch was, like Noah was. 
And I find that so terrifying and disturbing, like mm. really, that mm. we are at a point in humanity that religion is, it doesn't exist in the sense of like, no, yeah. even the people in religion who believe in a God don't really know what they're really believing in. Exactly. You know, when you think yeah. about like before you found this Dawah, basically, it's like, why would you even bother going to these religious leaders? Because they don't make sense and there's no way to have certainty that they're telling you the truth. So it's like certainty it's, yeah, is exactly the key, it's right? too hard to even like think about where to go so you just which goes mm. to prove that uh what i was like from his piece is saying from his knowledge is mm. the absolute truth because he says the th who is it the prince of darkness controls the world yeah. so there is more belief in him mm. than there is of god there is m like people believe in evil yeah way more than they believe in good like i remember growing Definitely. up and everybody would like the biggest thing that i was taught was like be careful mm. be careful don't trust people don't exactly. trust the yeah. don't trust the elders don't trust this person don't trust you don't trust don't even trust your own family members yeah. because they're going to betray you everyone's going to betray you someone's going to hurt you yeah just you know. have fear about the world and just don't trust people and because you know people are so used to being like betrayed and yeah like so misled and then, you know, like truly like Alhamdulillah for this call, yeah. you know, like, like truly, uh, I like, I thank God that he, he, he put us on this path towards God yeah, to get to know him. Exactly. You know, and anyone who comes across this call is incredibly lucky because they found someone who is actually appointed by God, who wouldn't misguide them and who knows what's best for them and wants what's best for them. You know, unlike all of these people we have who are appointed by Satan, you know, in positions of authority and whether it's religion or government, you know, they only care about their own interests. They don't care about the interests of people. No, and they don't. And this is why it's um, important that God, because he because he, he hasn't forsaken us, because people do question that. Mm. People really do. And like, we have to like, we have to give the viewer a, 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 a voice, mm. like the viewers out there who do believe that, where is God? Like, what, why is he not helping us? We're suffering. Mm. And God has responded, like through his warner, Abu Sadiq from whom is peace, by saying that this is, from our, this is the doing of our own hands by exactly. choosing other than God, by choosing men who led us so, so as you said, so far away from God. It's like leaving your dad's house because you're like a angry teenager and you don't want to live with your parents. Mm. And you leave the home and then you start wandering the earth, but you do it for so long that you don't even remember what your dad's face looks like. Yeah, it's really sad. And, you know, the Quran says that we do not send a punishment until we send a messenger to warn. So that's what Abba al-Sadiq from him is peace has been doing. You know, he is that messenger. He has been warning the people about the time we're in, like, since 2015. And, you know, even actually longer than that. Before exactly. he even knew that he was exactly. the Mehdi. He was warning people about how satanic this world is and how dark it is. And he was met, you know, exactly with what? Uh, uh, mockery? Exactly. And uh, basically people rejecting him just as mm. they did with the past prophet messengers. And it's written in the Quran that, mm. that there has not been a prophet that's been sent to a nation except that they've been ridiculed or mocked. Yeah. And, you know, it also says if you follow the majority of the people on earth, they will lead you astray. So, you know, this is what the majority of people are doing. But unfortunately, all because, they're yeah. following in the footsteps of Satan. When they so do this. and all this he's being mocked by all because he's doing what exactly what the previous prophets and messengers did which is that they claimed the the will of the predecessor and mm -hmm. said hey we are from god and we are calling towards god exactly. so he's mocked for something that is meant oh, see that's that's what mm. that's how dark you yeah. see he because he's such light and the nature of light is to expose darkness you you actually see the darkness for what it is because before i was so like this was just my normal life mm. Like this, we were so desensitized towards the way the world ran. Mm. We thought that this is it and there's no alternative. Exactly. But when we saw the alternative, we were like, wow, this was what God intended life to be. Exactly. Yeah. This is how we were always supposed to live under the supremacy of God, under the rulership of God and not under these evil, yes. evil people. And, you know, before Abba al Sadiq from him is peace, um, you know, he was, he, you know, he found out that he's appointed in the will of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family. And he was given this task yeah, by yeah. God that he has to fulfill, basically. And he's compelled by his faith in the will of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family, and, and in Ahmad al-Hassan, from him his peace, that he has to fulfill this. Exactly. And before this, you know, he, he just never expected it, basically. And no, he's, he did when, not. 
when he's talking about it, he says, you know, his highest hope was to serve, serve them. water or like help to one them. Of the companions. Yeah, exactly. To the companions of Imam Mehdi. Yeah. So since 2011, I was mm. like, he went out uh, uh, to Egypt and he he found the Yamani. He was ma- making many of the videos that exposed the darkness of the world. Yeah. See, he was exposed. He was exposing the the darkness and the tyrants even way before he, he even knew he was the Mahdi. Yeah. Something that never crossed his mind, as you said. Mm. So in 2011, he ple- he came across the Yemeni, who mm-hmm. was already had his dawah, as we mentioned yesterday, in, in Iraq. Yeah. And he pledged allegiance in the Yemeni because why? Because Abu Sayyid believed in the will of Prophet Muhammad, mm. uh, peace be upon him and his holy family. And since 2011, all the way up to 2014, he's been he he people um, he called towards the supremacy of God, towards Ahmad Hassan's uh, dawah. So people flew, um, began to fly out as the narration state. People from the west, you know, they fly out in clouds yeah. mm. towards uh, the companion of Egypt, and uh, they joined his call, mm. uh, the the call of the Yamani Ahmad Hassan, and they together spread uh, the message. So. You see, he was already paving the way mm. until then. He was obviously in 2015, as the when Abdullah of Hijaz died, uh, he found out he was one of the successive successes of Ahmad Hassan. Exactly. You, look, you can't even imagine mm. it, really. To be fair, like imagine, like I, I can't even imagine what he, how he felt. I know he expressed it in his book, and we urge you to go read the goal of the wise. Mm. But like, imagine his journey, like all his life, all he ever wanted to do was serve mankind, mm. you know? Mm. And then finally God gave him exactly that authority yeah. to, to, to serve mankind. Cause mm. they, they, they're the, he's Abdullah, he's a servant of God and they're the ultimate um, servants for the people. Mm. And, you know, like we were saying yesterday, God chooses the ones who are the best, like who are the most humble, who are the most like extremely like kind and compassionate, the ones who are never going to like take for their own interests, basically, or like oppress the people or misguide them for their own interests. You know, the people who are like 100 percent like in it for the right reasons. Um, yeah, exactly. Having like a good heart, basically, and wanting what's best for the people, which so is what he always sincerely wanted. Yeah. So mm. when I was like, so when he claimed the will. Mm. He uh, he he was sent out. Of course, like the command became that we should like move to from England to Germany. Mm. To and you were with the um, you were with the community at this stage. So right? I, yeah. So yeah. So I got lucky, and I I joined Abu Salik uh, right after he rose the banner, mm. and I went out to Egypt to join him and the community that was there at that time, mm. and. Uh, as soon as I met him, like truly for me, he, you just know, you know, that this man truly is a man of God and that he is from the Alul Bayt, not just from his morals and manners, but there's this intense energy is as if like the souls know, mm. like they know that this, this is the father and this is the vessel that God is speaking to me through. Like yeah. you just, like I have seen mm. through my journey, people who don't even believe in him shake. Mm. Uh, I have seen people who who have doubted doubted in him also like in his presence they 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 don't they they're speechless mm. and even people who don't uh, who are good people who he meets in everyday life who just don't believe in the court but they even they know that this man is a is a is a good man mm. like he's a true man he's a truthful man yeah and they and they feel safety from him mm. and I found that very fascinating yeah so from Egypt we traveled to uh, Germany. And in Germany, uh, he established the base, mm. and uh, many more people, many people joined, like many my fam, my whole family joined, mm. many Ansar all over the world, like literally just like the way the narration said that like yeah. the leaves uh, in autumn, you know, when the leaves yeah, get together, they get gathered together. And mm. then he said that the uh, then he told us a verse in the Quran where he's like, wherever you may be, God will gather mm. gather you all. And this is the scattered uh, nation of the 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 Mahdi of yeah, Israel, the tribes of Israel. And uh, then we established a community there. And then what happened? We grew. And in Germany is when he opened the first satellite channel, mm. the Black Banner satellite channel, where he started broadcasting the supremacy of God, the yeah. same message message that people are hearing right now. So since mm. then, he's been actually calling towards the supremacy of God, calling towards Ahmad Hassan's uh, message. Yeah, and. Of course, uh, many pledged allegiance, many mm. disbelieved. Just like how we mentioned the past prophets and messengers' uh, stories, people enter the dawah, people leave the dawah. Yeah. Okay. 
And you know, one thing that I was just thinking when you were talking about, you know, this presence that Abba Asad from him his peace has, you know, he is that man who is appointed by God today. So that means that he is, you know, like in the time of Adam, when God blows the spirit into Adam, he is that man who has the Holy Spirit in the, his heart. Like he is the veil mm-hmm. um, for the Holy Spirit. So, you know, he is exactly the same as, you know, Jesus or Muhammad were in their time. Um, exactly. So, no, you're right. And this is, you know, why basically f- people have this feeling, this mm-hmm. presence around him. Um, so, yeah, and it, for me, basically, I just think it was like, you yeah. know, when I found out there's a man who's appointed today, that was just like such an amazing thing for me because it just gave me so much hope. Hope, exactly. Right? So then people would be wondering, why did he come out to Europe? You know, like, why is the Mahdi got to do with Europe? Well, it's as a nation state, the Mahdi, like the Kaim, the riser, he's also will not rise until uh, 10,313 uh, companions uh, join him and support him. Yeah, and they're scattered like all over the world. So uh, naturally mm. his sunnah is he travels. Mm. And then he right now is gathering the 313. Yeah. He At this stage, if people are asking what phase are we in, we are at the phase of gathering the 313. He's awakening those souls. This call, this channel, any 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 way you hear his his call yeah. is is to awaken those souls for them to realize, oh, he's here. Yeah, like this, this is, is happening right now. Yeah. Like just have that moment where you hear the message for the first time and you wake up suddenly and you're like, wow, this is what life is actually about. I, I'm sure, Alex, you can actually go back in your own journey and then when like when we, when we this call is given out to certain people, you notice mm. some people, the first thing they do is just mock it mm. or they reject it or they're repulsed by it or they're mm. disturbed by it. Mm. Some start shaking and they, they don't know what to do about it. Mm. And then there's those who are just like, and 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 Mark, this is the miracle for me. This mm. is what I found very fascinating, especially when I came to Germany, is when I saw the different types of Ansar that joined Abu Sadiq. Mm. There were people from all walks of life. Some people not religious at all, mm. and you wouldn't imagine them. I don't even think they knew the concept of the Mahdi. Yeah, yeah, they didn't even know. So, I mean, some of them didn't even believe in God. Yeah, and you know, I think people, because Abba Asadit from his PC has this Holy Spirit and he has this presence that you're talking about, people just see him and they immediately feel the presence of God. Because this is, you know, on this earth, the only like w- place we're ever going to see God, the only place we're ever going to hear God is through like the man that he appoints. Yeah. So this is, and you know, the soul recognizes this, that. Exactly, the soul knows that's the key. It, so the soul ha- knows it. Yeah. So then these people... As soon as they hear him or they see his face or they hear his voice, they're just like, it's like this awakening. It's just like this click. It's like it, a click. Yeah, it's it a literally switch. Is, yeah, it's a switch. switch. Yeah. It, so the switch turns on and they just, they open their eyes and they're like, wait a minute. Shouldn't I be doing something? Yeah, this is what I'm actually here for. This is what yes, I exist on this remember. world to do. Because, you know, we know this is the reason that all of those good souls have returned in order to give victory to Abba al-Sadiq from him's peace, in order to be with him yeah. in this time. Um, so e- either you have that switch or you're that person that's rejecting, mm-hmm. right? So that's mm-hmm. why we have these extreme ends of people who either ridicule us or mock us or they just overnight just believe. And yeah. People don't understand why. And they don't even sometimes understand why. But it's because of that soul exactly. that's within them. And, you know, that's why any believers out there right now who are listening shouldn't feel disheartened if, like, their family or friends possibly don't believe when they first hear it. Because actually, you know, this is how it's always been with the prophets it's and just messengers. Normal. Exactly. It's part of the sunnah. Yeah. So... We have like, so what is this? So these are, who are we talking about? We're talking about the successors of Imam, Imam Mahdi, the mm-hmm. 12th Imam. Mm-hmm. So we spoke about the Yamani Ahmad Hassan, who's one of the successors of Imam Mahdi. Yeah. And now we are talking about uh, the uh, Abu Sadiq, Abdullah Hashim, mm-hmm. who is the riser of the family of Muhammad, who is mentioned in the narrations that will come along mm-hmm. with Imam Mahdi. Yeah. And he's appointed by Ahmad Hassan, who is appointed by Imam Mahdi. Mm-hmm. So it is obligatory for people to follow this call. Yeah. Because they are elected by God. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we only seek to please Allah. Exactly. You know, it's obligatory for people to follow this call if they wish to be close to God and if they wish to be obedient to him. Because, you know, like when Satan appoints Adam and he says, you know, worship me through Adam. And when he says that, he means like obey me, like prostrate to Adam. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the way that God wants to be worshipped. It's through the man that he appointed. We can't choose to worship God in our own way. We can't choose to have our own private personal relationship with God that we make up, basically. It has to be through the man that he appointed. There is no other way to obey God because he is the only way that God is speaking to us. Exactly. Um, and so, yeah, we, like you said, we only seek to please God. Um, we're following the will of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. And, you know, Abba al-Sadiq from him, his peace has said about this, you know, when we stand in front of God on the day of judgment, 
yeah. and we're explaining ourselves to him. This is to know. all the comments that I keep saying you guys are disbelievers, you're going yeah. hellfire, you guys are like this and that, how exactly. dare you? Yeah. What is our crime? Okay, as you were saying? Yeah, you know, well, if we're, you know, if we're standing in front of God on the day of judgment and we're explaining ourselves to him, we're explaining our actions on earth, we will have nothing to say except that, you know, we heard that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family wrote a will and he described this will as a protection from misguidance and he said, I will write you a document that if you hold on to it, you will never go astray. And so, you know, the people who believed in this call and believed in Abba al-Sadiq from him is peace, they believed in the words of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family when he said this. Um, and for sure, you know, that is... What kind of God, after he hears that, would just throw you into hellfire? Exactly. What kind of God are they portraying out there? They don't know God, clearly. Mm. Like, Could that's not merciful. How can there be narrations which state the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, said this is a protection from misguidance? And then I believe in it and it's my fault. Exactly. Because this, these are the words of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. So, you know, for sure, they're not going to misguide us. But would you want to believe in a God that when you followed his r rulings mm. and you followed his law, he just said that my Prophet said that if this were not, this this is a protected uh, document. Mm. And if, if I hold on to it, I'm going to go to hellfire because your followers are telling me I'm going to hellfire over mm. it. Mm. Yeah, that's not, that doesn't it sound really like makes no sense. And, you know, we say this a lot, but, you know, really the people who are watching this who like haven't made up their mind yet you know it really is a duty upon you to go and investigate the will of the prophet muhammad peace be upon him and his family because it's such a serious matter and you know when we're talking about the day of judgment do you want to go to your day of judgment and hear and you know have to say to god that you heard about this um but yet you decided not to act on it you decided not to research um on it when you heard that the prophet muhammad wrote a will um, and for sure, you know, this is such an important issue and everyone who has actually investigated um, this claim and investigated this will has found the evidence and the proofs to be rock solid. Um, yeah, it's insane. Exactly. It's really a way for us to be certain. So look, you see many people, uh, you know, I had my own uncle who did a stikara in front of me about this mm. call and it came true. It came, um, it came out as that the call is truthful. Yeah. There are many stikaras, many visions, many dreams. You yourself had dreams. Mm. Uh, where people uh, in the visions, the signs are calling towards Abu Salih. Yeah, there's many people who've had dreams that they've seen the Prophet Muhammad, they've seen Jesus, and they've testified that Abba al-Sadiq from him is peace, is the truth, and this call is the truth. And, you know, this is another thing, that Abba al-Sadiq um, from him is peace, he is the only person actually on the earth who says, ask God about me, right? Because he's the only person who's actually appointed by God, and God will always testify on his behalf to anyone who's sincerely looking for the truth and sincerely wants to find the truth. Um, and so many people basically who asked God to guide them um, were guided directly to him. Yeah, it's. I think it's uh, fascinating how mm. everyone is like, there's just too much proofs. Yeah. That's the insane thing about it. Abba Salik has come with one of the most proofs than mm. any other prophet messenger has come forth. Exactly. With. There are so many narrations about the banner of allegiances to God. And it's like this message of allegiances to God. It's something that the meaning had been completely lost. Like if someone was looking at those narrations without having seen mm -hmm. Ahmed al-Hassan and Abba al-Sadiq from him as peace in their teachings, mm -hmm. they wouldn't even understand what allegiances to God means. Exactly. It means the supremacy of God. And that's why it's on the banner, you know, that God is the one who appoints the ruler. We only follow God. Um, and yeah, so all of these narrations basically have been fulfilled. And uh, I want to read something from Abu Salik. Mm. So it says, yeah, and I remember I prostrated on the ground in the middle of the night. Mm. And I spoke to God from the bottom of my heart with tears flowing down my cheeks and my face. And it made the ground beneath me wet. And my hands were wet from my own tears. And I said to God, I said, God, if the truth is with Judaism, then I want to be a Jew. If the truth is with Christianity, uh, if you are Jesus Christ, if Jesus Christ is God, then please show me and I will worship you. If Buddhism is the way and the path, uh, and I'll follow it. Show me and I will worship you. Uh, if Sunni Islam is the right way to go, then show me and I will follow it. If Ali ibn Abi Talib is the right for vice -trend. if Ali ibn Abi Talib is even God, like some people say that he is, then show me and I will follow it. Mm. And I'll never go back, but just show me, guide me, take me by my hand. I don't want to be misguided, please. You see the sincerity mm. in mm. this prayer he has. That's why he said that Allah does not misguide a sincere servant. What mm. kind of God, if you sincerely are seeking him and you're confused and you want him to... Because there's so much, there's too, look, there's too much religions, there's mm. too much sects, there's too much denominations, there's too much people calling towards a God. Yeah. 
that they think is correct. And all of them think they're absolutely right and the other mm. one's going to hellfire. Mm. So naturally, if a sincere worshipper who believes in the the idea of God is standing amongst this ocean, mm. you know, mm. of all these people calling towards a God, you're, you're going to want to ask him, like, where are you? Like, exactly. There's just too many people having your, like, using you as a, as a mask, mm. you know, and they have other uh, nasty intentions. Mm. And this is what so many people who have found this call have done, basically. They just, so, like, looked at the world and saw, like, okay, there's so many different sects everywhere. Like, obviously, logically, the majority of them are wrong. And they didn't feel that connection with God and they felt like aimless in their religion. So they were looking like, where is the truth? Where can I find the truth? And they asked God um, and God showed them. Mm -hmm. He showed them like as he showed Abba Asad from him his peace, this path to the supremacy of God, which is the only right path. Um, This is the only true message of God. No, it truly Mm. it is. So you see that we are calling people towards God and declaring... So he was calling people towards God and he's declaring himself innocent from the evil deeds of all those people who claim to represent the Prophet. Mm. You see, a lot of people, they represent the Prophet. The scholars represent the Prophet. Mm. You have Iran that represents the Prophet. You have this country that represents the Prophet. They claim to. Yeah, they all claim. They Mm. claim. And and some talk on the behalf of uh, Imam Mahdi. Yeah. Which is like... As you see how dark it is, mm. Jesus Jesus warned of these wolves in sheep's clothing. Exactly, you know, they claim to be representatives of the prophet, you know, they sit on his platform and, you know, whether it's, you know, in mosques or, you know, in, in Islam, whether it's people in churches, whether it's rabbis in synagogues, all of these people, they claim to be representing God and speaking on his behalf. Yet, you know, we see in this world, you know, we're all watching as thousands of children are dying right now. You know, if you turn on the news, you see these shocking scenes that are happening, you know, children um, in these wars, like, which are happening all over now. These wars are just spreading and there's conflict everywhere. We see, like, these shocking images of children crying over their dying parents, children shaking, like, in terror and shock. And, you know, what are these religious leaders doing? What are these so-called representatives of God doing in this situation? Because for sure they are doing absolutely nothing. No, they're not doing anything. Like, as you said, what what are the Muslim leaders doing who claim that they represent the Prophet? Like, the holy custodians of the Kaaba, you know, in, in Saudi Arabia, the mm. the capital of Islam. Yeah. What's going on there? So these people who claim to represent God, for sure they don't believe in God at no, all. No, they don't. Um, they and sold you know, themselves and they prostrated to the devil a long time ago. And this is how they have their positions of authority. Because, you know, like we were stating, you know, in the temptation of Jesus, Jesus offers him the world. He offers him to be a ruler over the world if he bows down and worships the devil. Um, and we know the devil states um, that he has this authority. He is able to appoint the ruler. So all of these people who are in these positions of authority, they that's exactly what they have done. They have prostrated to Satan in order to get these... Um, positions and they don't believe in god and i want to read a little part from uh you know abu sadiq and he said that no Mm. muslim leader that Mm. is claiming that jerusalem is so holy for them is willing to do anything because they're hypocrites Mm. that's heavy yeah and of course they don't even believe in imam al-mahdi clearly because if they did they won't they won't be like the the muslim world won't be in the state it is right now yeah and they don't even believe in god Almighty, because mm. if they did believe in God and they did believe in Jesus and if they did believe in Muhammad peace be upon him and they didn't believe in the prophets and messengers, then mm. they would know that there is something that is being desecrated, yeah. that is more holy than the stones at the wall in Jerusalem or the bricks in the Al Aqsa Mosque, mm. and that is the hearts of those little children that are the real temple that God's spirit was meant to dwell in. And he's talking Mm. about all those battered and bruised and terrified children that you see all over the videos across the world, Mm. specifically in the Middle East. And so they're all anti-humanists, the Muslim leaders, he means. Mm. They're anti-humanity. They hate human beings or else they would have stopped a long time ago their sacrifice of human life. And that is so true. These people clearly have no faith. They clearly don't believe in God. They're just stating that they do like in order to control the people, basically. Um, And in order to continue oppressing them. It's it's disgusting. It really is. Mm. So I was like made it very clear. Like for us, our religion is humanity first. Mm-hmm. The prophets and messengers have come to el- like elevate human beings into being true human beings. Exactly. You know? yeah. Like to think of one another first before they think about themselves. To just be a decent human being. Like, mm. you know, 
um, like love one another, yeah. care for one another. How can you be happy when you know people are dying? How can you have faith when you know people are suffering and you know you're in a well-off position? And this is something that was the message of Jesus, and it, you know Abba al Sadiq from Imam's Peace has echoed this message. Um, and for sure, you know these people they don't believe in God. You know, all of the prophets and messengers they came with this humanity first. Like, and this is why the supremacy of God is so important because you know when we have God's leader ruling over us, we have none of this. We don't see these wars where these children are like terrified and shaking and dying, and we don't see you know all this suffering and oppression and poverty in the world where people are like, you know, just trying to exist basically they're trying to survive um and you know the reason for that is because we have these leaders appointed over us who've been appointed by the people who only care about their own interests and this yeah. isn't this is the whole point because god doesn't want us to live like this god doesn't want to be like leaving us to these tyrants in order to oppress us god never actually intended to be absent from the affairs of human beings he intended to be the ruler over us and you know if we have god ruling over us we live in paradise like yeah. we don't have any of these issues you know, God provided, um, you know, more than enough in the world like mm -hmm. for everyone to have, you know, even more than they need. Like there is enough sustenance <laughs> yeah, on the world is. for everyone. So we know for sure if we see someone going without, if we see someone in poverty, that someone has taken their share. And this is exactly what we're seeing in the world today with these super rich people and these warmongering tyrant yeah. like leaders, basically. And those citizens out there who, are, who, who think that they should take a side in these wars, mm. there is no good side. There exactly. is no side because all of them belong to the devil. Yeah, and people like make you think, um, you know, God is with this side or God is with that side in the war. But the reality is God is with none of these tyrants. He is with none of these people who start wars. God is against this suffering. He's against this bloodshed. And the only person God is with is the man he appoints. And there's only one person that, man, uh, that God appoints in every day and age. Um, and mm. that is the man with his Holy Spirit. And today this man is Abba al Sadiq from him is peace. So obviously we urge people to investigate because mm. as the Holy Quran says, or you who believe, even if an evildoer comes to you with our matter or news, mm. investigate lest you be of the regretful. Exactly. So you so. have to investigate mm. the matter. It doesn't matter what you think about us. Mm. Even if you think we're disbelieving people, it doesn't matter because mm. we came with a matter that's very heavy and it's to do with your salvation and it's to do with the Prophet Muhammad himself. Mm. Mm. So when people are speaking on behalf of Prophet Muhammad, it is upon you as mm. a true believer, if you claim to believe in uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that you have to investigate this will, you have to investigate the 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 claims. These, these are very bold claims. Yeah, Abu Sadiq has come with very heavy claims that no other uh, person has come with. Mm. Nobody has called towards the supremacy of God the way he has. No one on this earth right now is calling towards the supremacy Definitely. of God except for the past prophets and messengers. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, no one has risen the banner towards the mm. supremacy of God, mm -hmm. and no one. And I mean no one. You can search your internet. You can search. You can travel the whole world. You will not find divine knowledge the way Abu Sadiq has presented it. You will not find no, knowledge yeah. that is on this earth, that's scattered on this earth, by the way. Mm. That's mixed with falsehood also. Picked out. Like he has picked out these gems from the ocean, this vast dark ocean. He's picked mm. them out and presented them to, to the people. Mm. And the way he's connected them is impossible for a a normal human being to do so unless he's enforced by a supernatural spirit like he has to have something that's truly out of this world exactly yeah like something out of this world exists for it to be within him for him to know all this or else it's not like you you can you can't not name one scholar one priest one anyone mm. Yeah, there is literally no one on earth who can you, provide you this Bring forth the, the smartest mm. person that you believe it by your definition of smart mm. and they will not put forth the things that he has put forth. It's impossible. Yeah, definitely. There is no one on earth you. who provides this. Um, we, can actually we actually challenge mm. people, but nobody has come forth with anything yet. Yeah, 100%. So if you go to the Mehdi Has Appeared channel, you can see all these videos that we're talking about, um, you know, this knowledge that has been provided by Abba al Sadiq from him is peace. And if you go to our website, the theahmadireligion.org, you can read his gospel, The Goal of the Wise. And we really urge you to do this. You know, this is such an important time. You know, we're on the brink of this big punishment that God is about to send down, which we know has started. We can very clearly see in the world around us. So it's a very important time to be absolutely certain of our religion and our relationship with God. Um, and I think we'll leave it there now. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. alaikum.